Hi everyone, I'm Dave Giancola, joined again by Mike Trosel for another episode of The Road to Stardom. Quickly after beginning his professional golf career, England's Matthew Fitzpatrick established himself as a top competitor and a consistent winner. And the early success was foreshadowed by his performance in the 2013 U.S. Amateur, which was taking place at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, 100 years after Francis Wiemet's watershed victory in the U.S. Open there. With a field that included future stars such as Bryson DeChambeau, Xander Shoffley, and Scotty Scheffler, Fitzpatrick rose to the top, and the golf world got a glimpse of what was to come. How about those names, Mike? Let's take a look at the home stretch of Fitzpatrick's U.S. Amateur title run, beginning with his semifinal victory over future PGA Tour winner Corey Connors. Fitzpatrick to apply more pressure to Connors here. This for a two up lead with this birdie from short range. And nothing to this putt, pretty much left center. He's picked it up, picked up the pace, picked up those approaches. And he now has a two up lead. His biggest lead of the day. Again, Connors had a two up lead through the first four holes, but has lost that and then some. Great history here at the Country Club through the years. They began the USGA Championships back in 1902 with the Women's Amateur. The great win by Francis Wimet at the 1913 U.S. Open. Julius Boros won the second of his U.S. Open titles in a playoff. Jackie Cupid and Arnold Palmer back in 1963. Your old pal Eddie Pierce won the U.S. Junior Amateur, Gary, in 1968. Curtis Strange, U.S. Open win in 88, first of two in a row. Kelly Keeney, the last USGA championship staged here at the Country Club in the Women's Amateur Championship. Back out at the par 5 12th, Watt for birdie, and this is the putt from the wrong side of the hole here, Roger. It is. Uh, not one he can freewheel. His hands are a little bit tied. This is a putt you have to hit a little bit on the defensive side. Come across a slight ridge, last half of the putt downhill, moving to his left. But did he play it? Oh, almost perfectly. Oh, how does it stop there? Wow. Beautiful touch. Just about matched the line and the speed perfectly. But Goss will have a chance here to grab a two up lead like Fitzpatrick has. Now we'll get a good look at his routine here. I love this. Just a practice stroke. Active stroke looking at the hole, so allowing a lot of freedom. Quick look at the hole and then back to the ball. Boom. Very much a flow to that motion, and that reminds me a lot of Brad Faxon and a lot of really good putters. They don't stand over the ball too long once they get back from looking at the hole, so you don't think too much, just react. Well, Watt avoids the Goss birdie and stays one down. In the second semifinal, all Aussie duo in the U.S. Amateur. The long par four, 14th, 505 yards. And then I think the most challenging second shot or approach shot on the entire golf course. So green sits up above the level of the fairway some 30 feet or so. And if you come up short, the ball will roll back down about 30 or 40 yards to the fairway. So you must uh, up in the air. Gonna be far enough. No. That is gonna come right back down the hill. And of divots. You can see it's a popular spot. It'd be very fortunate to not end up in one. And here's Goss over at 13. Oh. It's 177. Hole cut on the right hand side of the green. Pretty well played. Goss with a one up lead over Watt. No cameras. And how about the live for Watt there, Roger? The Sandfield divot? Yes, he's caught a divot. Uh, players were virtually the exact same distance to the hole. This from 177. And of course, here the contest is all about contact, Gary. Well, good news is it's in the front part of the divot. In other words, there's not a lot of sand behind the ball. If it were up toward closer to the green, it would, uh, I think, be a little more difficult. Sounded as though contact was pretty good. 
Maybe just a shade heavy. Comes up short. So big advantage for Goss there. Is Brady Watt had his one and only lead after the first couple of holes on the first hole. Dan, we're going to use our NBC of technology. We're going to zoom in on the contact here and let's see exactly what happens. See if uh, he does actually get this ball just a little heavy. Eh, not bad. Uh, you know, it's a shot where you've got to hit down on the ball. It's the only way you're going to get it to go. And not a bad leave if he's going to not hit the green. Being short is certainly where you want to be there at 13. This was just earlier. Connor second over at the tough 14th 200. Great chance to uh, cut into the lead, but that's thin and right. And that is not good. Connors and Fitzpatrick battle on. The low amateur at the British Open currently with a two up lead over Connors. He's also the second ranked amateur in the world. And Watt and Goss. Goss with a slim one up lead. Yeah, I'll get it out. Third shot for Matt Fitzpatrick below the green at 14. And this is one of the firmer greens on the golf course. He's going to need this land to land this about two or three paces on and with a little bit of check spin if he wants to get it close. Over at 13, watch short of the green with his third. And we'll have to chip across about 20 feet of this uh, very close cut area around the green to get onto the surface. Uh, ball will come over a little brow about uh, 15 feet in front of the hole and should die a little to the right as it loses speed, I would think. Didn't have a very good sound to it, Roger. It sounded a little clanky. Got away with it okay. Back over at 14. What about Connors, Nota? This is not a great place to be. If he tries to hit a little low runner and it comes out heavy, he's going to end up where Fitzpatrick was. And it's clean enough to where if he tries to float it, he might catch too much ball. Caddy loves it. And back over at 13. Mentioned Curtis Strange's U.S. Open back in 1988. And in a playoff, 18 hole playoff with Nick Faldo, one of his big highlights came at this par 4 13th. Read this double breaking putt absolutely perfectly. A great reaction. Pretty easy victory, though, for Curtis in that uh, playoff over Nick Faldo. One by four shots. 75 versus Curtis's 71. And of course, he went on the next year to win. The next U.S. Open at Oak Hill. And kind of inexplicably never won again. Goss with a chance to win the hole here and up the lead. This two across that little crowd, then moving to the right at the end. A little too much. But who knows? Hole is not over as Watt still has a putt coming up and back over at 14. And Matt. This putt is extremely fast. He's got to be very careful to not give it too much because it'll roll a good six or seven feet past. Practice stretch just barely moving the putter. Is he going to use this yes. below the hole? Oh. And hit it so softly. It's not like his opponent has a good back either. He's got a very quick one left as well. So that's a bogey for Fitzpatrick. Is long par four. Get Connors in a second. Back over to 13. And Brady Watt trying to stay in it here. Par to have the hole. And this is the kind of putt, Gary. It just depends what kind of speed you want to put on. If you want to hit it softly, I think it's just off the hole on the left. Or you can hit it at the edge or just inside if you want to give it a little ramming speed. Well, 
done by Watt, who's able to handle that sand filled divot, and scratch out his par, and stay just one down. Meantime, back over to 14 for Connors, Noda. And as Gary said, this putt is no gimme. This is a putt that has to be played well outside the hole, and if he does not release that putter head, it will sneak off to his right. Since the fourth hole, as it's been all it's Patrick. But in this one either. So Corey Connors is running out of holes. Just four left. He's two down. It's a Matt Fitzpatrick U.S. Amateur Championship from the Country Club. Back at the U.S. Amateur Championship, where, by the way, the winners of today's semifinal matches get themselves an invitation, most likely, to the Masters next year and the U.S. Open. So a little more added pressure to trying to get your name on the Havemeyer Trophy as well. At the 15th, Connors, who is two down to Matt Fitzpatrick with his second. From 209 to this back right hole, and this is headed right of the green. Yeah. Has not made very good swings here the last couple of holes. The club gets long at the top. The club face is shut, and he gets in front of it just a little bit and uh, blocks that thing out to the right. And Garrett, this hole location, similar setup to 10 and 13, where Fitzpatrick hit it awfully close. So I expect a good one out of him. Say it. Oh, a little twirl there. Oh, the best of uh, Tiger Woods. Ooh, a little early twirl. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Is uh, long and left. Good news is whole location over on the right hand side of him, so he'll have some room to work with. But uh, that rough, very long and gnarly. Uphill shot here for Brady Watt at the 14, some 30 feet fairway to green. Yeah, so the players will factor in Dan about 10 yards. I'll try to add about 10 yards to the actual yardage, so we have 202, probably play closer to 210, 212. on a good line. Solid shot. With these kind of moments. That kind of shot that can just turn a match on its ear. And Brady Watt, who's that close for a kick in birdie at the 14th, just a few moments perhaps away from squaring up that match with four holes left. Golf shot, big guy. Well, maybe Connors can scramble back in against. Uh... Well, this will be a big, big shot right here. This the kid. short game has been phenomenal. Let's see. Well, Connors got a good chance to make that putt. He's going to hit it. Connors is up there getting the ball. <laughs> Not bad. Matty F. Both Matt Fitzpatrick and Corey Connors have par putts at 15. Fitzpatrick with a two up lead to putt first. Little bit of movement from left to right. Oh. It's Patrick with a clutch score. It's going to put the pressure big time on 
Connors. And over at 14, where Watts birdie has already been conceded, so this birdie for Goss to have the hole and keep his lead. The nice thing is here in this situation, you can afford to be a little bit firmer. Look at this putt, Gary. Oh. Oh. You know you don't have to worry about the comeback putt. Oh, what? That is effort. the exchange of the day, and very, in all likelihood, could determine the outcome of this match. Watt nearly holds it from the fairway, and that's great sportsmanship. Oh, Watt coming over after Goss Went on top of him with a birdie. Amazing stuff by the two Aussies. And back over at 15, Connors facing the pressure here to stay two down. Clutch so pars by both Connors and Fitzpatrick. So Fitzpatrick two up with three to play. And again, the exchange at 14 was incredible. This was Brady Watt and a shot that looked good right from the moment it left the club face. Five iron for 202, Garrett. Yeah. Just oh. right at the front of the green releases, and you know, I think if the flag stick's not in, it probably goes in for a two. So he gets the birdie, and then Goss does this. And as I mentioned, he, he has a luxury here of being a little more aggressive on this part because you don't have to worry about the comebacker. It, uh, it doesn't go in, you lose the hole. It's not a good sportsmanship by Goss and Watt, and uh, boy, <laughs> this is shaping up to be quite a finish here by these two. Well, I have to say, Dan, uh, I've been very impressed with the quality of the play today in both matches. Uh, usually at this stage of the championship, uh, you know, it's a long week. They've played a lot of golf. There's a lot at stake, especially for those who go on and uh, play in the final tomorrow. But uh, I've been very impressed with all four competitors. What about the other match, uh, Steve? Uh, Fitzpatrick there hanging in there against Connors after a nice exchange of pars in the previous hole. I think Fitzpatrick is clearly showing why he's the number two ranked amateur in the world. Neil Raymond, a co-medalist at this championship, said the other day when they had a little exchange in the uh, media center, this is the best player in the field. Keep an eye on him. Again, the number two ranked amateur in the world. Low M at Muirfield earlier this summer at the British Open, trying oh. to get himself a spot yeah. in the Masters yeah. of the U.S. Open next yeah. year. Yeah. He can win this match, but that one comes up a little short and to the right. right. That had to be mishit yeah. just a little bit. He was yelling go virtually as soon as he made contact with it. So. First time Fitzpatrick has played this hole in match play. Remember, he's won every match previous to this one. Four and three, identical scores. Back to 15, where Goss has already found the first cut of rough, and so Watt on this long par four. Yeah, this is a difficult tee shot. Uh, blind totally off one of the new tees that now appears to be headed left. Find uh, the left rough. Uh, all depends on the lie. Back to the par three, 16th. Connor's running out of holes here and running out of time. He certainly is, and. It is officially time to hit the panic button. He's got 161 front, 166 to the hole. Awesome, Corp. This looks like a very good shot. He's got that distance. Yeah, it was. Good time to come through for Corey Connors. Needs a win here to get closer to Matt Fitzpatrick. Great sportsmanship by the Aussie mates and good friends, Goss and Watt. Patrick from the bunker alongside the green at 16 with a two up lead, but Connors is tight with his tee shot. And he's got a Why nice flat lie, plenty of green to work with. Green working back and toward him, which will help him get a little bit of spin on it. Well, I think he'll be a little disappointed in that, to be perfectly honest with you. That uh, should have carried farther up into the green. Mentioned it's an all family affair for the Fitzpatricks. There is his mom, Sue. He's got his dad here, Russell, as well. I asked Sue how Matt got into the game. She said her father, his grandfather, bought him a little set of plastic clubs at an early age, and he just took to it. And here he is battling in the U.S. Amateur Championship, the most prestigious amateur championship in the world. Over at 15, Watt from the rough with his second, Roger. Good line, good angle. 208 to the hole. 
How about this game, though? Match play, Gary. <laughs> huh? A guy hits the flagstick from 202 yards. The ball stops a foot and a half away. Conceded three. You're the guy that walks away. Deflated. Really kind of having to regroup. Yeah, and deflated. Squirted right out of oh. right the bunker at the other end. Oh, it bounced back in toward inside the ropes, but still in that thick rough. Yeah, place where we just saw Corey Connors get the ball up and down from this, so it's doable. Fitzpatrick still away at the par 3 16th. This for par. And Gary, this is that section of the green that's really difficult to read. Not a whole lot of movement to this. So it's it left. Yeah, and he continues to stand up there and still place things right in the hole. The Connors will still have a birdie putt to cut the lead of Fitzpatrick as we shift over to Goss, Roger. And he has 190 left of the hole. And although it's in the intermediate cut, it's really kind of a fluffy area here. Ball settled down a little bit. This is one that could, uh, could jump. Is launched a mile in the air at the hole. I don't know if it's going to get up or not. Still a well played shot right from that line to control the spin. Back over to 16. This to win the hole for Birdie for Connors. Big Huge part. butt. Yep. Just on the right edge. And they're on the tee here at 17, where we met Birdie the 71st hole back in 1913 to help himself get into that playoff. Three wood from the tee, and you can't go left. It's not enough club to carry those bunkers down the left hand side. It's a wonderful short par four, Dan. 369 yards today. Gives the players a lot of options off the tee. You can play short and out to the right. Leave yourself a little longer approach shot into the green, or you can challenge those bunkers down the left. Just uh, some 280 yards if you're going to try to take them all on. You lay up, though, you have to stay right. Well, Matt. And this is ideal here, right down the right center. Yeah, nice little hybrid club off the tee. Beautiful position. Patrick nursing a one up lead at 17. We go back to 15. And here's Watt from the rough. And not the best lie I've seen. It's not that the grass is uh, tall, it's more matted uh, and uh, uh, twisted, but the uh, ball gives the appearance of being on the depth area and sitting down. Just pitching back uphill a little bit, but uh, this one could come out of this lie a number of different ways, real dead or. Kind of hot and fast. Boy, that is pretty nicely done. A little right of the hole, but uh, um, he judged the ball coming out of the rough well. So a lot with a fighting chance for par. Coming to NBC, James Spader stars in a new drama, The Blacklist. Mondays this fall here on NBC. Right here at 15 for Goss. You, Roger, you mentioned that incredible exchange at 14. You know, a lot of times we, we see, you know, like one exchange, but to see those two kinds of dramatic exchanges by both players in the same hole at that moment was just okay. incredible. That's kind of like in your face. No, in your <laughs> face. <laughs> face. So it's going to be a par for Goss and Watt will be faced with a pressure packed par putt to stay one down. Oliver made the last one at 14 and thought he might have had that one. Good for a long way. Well, Gary this is a big big putt. Should move a little to his left, but the prospect of going two down with three holes to go becomes pretty significant. I would certainly agree, Roger. This is where you just have to muster all your focus and energy into this one putt. 
sure you're confident on the read. Trust your ability. Had to come a little to his left, I believe. Well, Brady's a big name in this part of the country, and big moment here for Mr. Watt. Is that the headline? <laughs> it's amazing, Raja. You can read between the lines. <laughs> that is another great exchange. Watt will not go away. And there is Team Fitzpatrick. You saw us mention Eddie Lowry there. The 10 year old caddy it was uh, Eddie's older brother, Jack, who was supposed to caddy for Francis Wimet. Ended up going back to school. Eddie did school that day. And there you got young Alex on the bag of. Matt Fitzpatrick here, who's got the same kind of personality yeah. almost that Eddie Lowry had, make, guiding his man around the course. Distance control there, and doing just what you need to do. In the middle of the green, give yourself a nice look at Birdie. That's one of the youngest player caddy tandems we've seen. I mean, they, Matt's 18 and Alex is 14, but they look like they're like 12 and 10. In fact, Matt says, I'm not even shaven yet. And so that explains uh, how he's been mistaken for a non player at not only the Open Championship this summer, but that's continued that trend here at this U.S. Amateur at the Country Club. Can I see your player badge? You don't look like you're old enough to be out here playing. Gary, this is a very challenging shot. He's got 127 yards. Real issue's got to be the lip of the bunker. Can he yeah. hit the right club to get the ball to go that far and get it over the lip of the bunker? This looks to be very steep. Okay, this yeah. is one of those shots where That's he must reason, execute it perfectly. Anything a group or too low is going to go right into the face of the bunker. In position now, you have no choice. You have to try to pull this shot off. That sounded a little bit heavy. Sometimes you hang back just a little bit in an effort to get the club into the ball to get it up quickly enough. And it, uh, here's what happened there. Right for Fitzpatrick on that hole will put away Connors over at 16. Goss one up at the par three. We'll cut in the very front left portion of the green. Wind coming from the right, and this turning a little left and short. Nine iron. The two previous players both hit eight irons. Here's Watt, who's just continuing to battle. Made the big par saver at the previous hole, and now has his opening. Maybe he can square this up. He's taking the eight iron, and I think that uh, the appropriate club, Roger, he does like to work the ball a little right to left. Play that shot here without any problem. Well, from looking at Goss, it was though he had felt the wind was helping him from the right. I think it's more straight across. Turning left as well, a little further left. Ooh, good. Land that right on the down slope. It'll be tough to get it close. Over at 17. Connors is trying to hang out here. He loses this hole. It is over. And things not getting any easier. He's got about 40 yards to the hole. There is a backboard behind it, but if he's going to utilize that, he'll have to run it up there about three, four feet right of the hole. And then with the break, it'll work its way back toward the hole. I think I, that's the actual best shot. Well, you see Corey and his caddy Garrett Rank walking all the way up there. Garrett's a very accomplished player, runner up at the 2012 Mid Amateur uh, just outside of Chicago a year ago. The first time he's ever caddied for Corey, and he told me this morning he's trying to keep it light, social, funny, uh, yet they know each other pretty well. I've been uh, part of Golf Canada for three years now, so certainly has to be a, a, a bit of a help when when Corey's going through these ups and downs trying to keep it more flat line than getting uh, too high and low Gary well uh, in a perfect world <laughs> yeah I would agree with that but uh, right about now it's a little tough to keep it light and loose and this is a critical shot in this match and Gary there is a little bit of an elevation up to the landing area so that makes it even more close. to get clean contact. actually don't hit it, it. Yeah, it uh, seems as though it's an area where 
firm, and if that's the case, it uh, might be a little difficult to get the ball to get up in the air as much as you would like. Come out a little low and kind of skip. Is it high and soft? Yeah, this is good. It's going to catch that backstop. Here it comes. What a shot. That was really well executed. It was well thought out by both as they walked up there, looked at the situation, and then to pull the shot off, uh, hats off to him. That was not an easy shot. Yeah, Garrett loved it. Big smile yep. on his face. And now they can be light and loose. <laughs> he, he mentioned uh, Steve. He said it was really cool to field all of Canada behind me when I was going after that U.S. Mid Amateur Championship last summer. And so it's been neat to see Canada and his words remain a buzz for his good friend Corey Connors. Miss Canada has. Uh, really put a lot of effort into developing these young players not just at the amateur level but sending them off as successful professionals back over to Oliver Goss over at 16. We'll have that left for par. Also missed the green here at the par three. Back over at 17 for the young faced Fitzpatrick. In, in great sportsmanship demonstrated by Fitzpatrick he actually clapped when he saw where Connor's ball is going to finish up, so touch a class on his behalf. Just to win it. Side of Goss. And again, we say as long as uh, Fitzpatrick remains amateur, I don't think that's really going to become into question. <laughs> 18 years old, just going to get his college career going at Northwestern. So he's the first finalist in 36 old final tomorrow. And who will he be playing? Which Aussie? Well, let's send it down to Noda. Thanks, Danny. Well played. You're going to the Masters next year. How excited are you? Uh, very. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's taken a lot out of me that game. I've got to admit, I, uh, I didn't. I hit it decent off the tee. I, I hit it. I thought very poorly into the greens, like seriously poor. Um, but my short game, I I'd probably say that's probably the best short game I've ever in my life. Well, uh, you won the match, and did I mention you're getting to go to the U.S. Open as well? That's, a, I mean, it's got to be a dream come true. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know it was the Masters. I thought it was just the the British um, uh, and the U.S. But no, <laughs> well, yeah, it's amazing, speechless, as you can tell. Well, thanks a lot. Best of luck tomorrow. Back to you. Back yeah, to 16. It, it's getting better and better <laughs> by the moment for Matt Fitzpatrick. He wins tomorrow. He's also in the British Open. So. All the possibilities that go along with the U.S. Amateur Championship. This for par for Watt over at 16, who is one down to Goss. Just another big, big putt. Should move a little to his left, I would think. Oh, has this guy been up to the challenge? No matter what happens here in this match, if Goss is able to win it, Watt has battled unbelievably well down the stretch here. This for the half to keep his one up lead and go over to that 17th hole. Well, now the shoe's on the other foot, Jerry. <laughs> He's the guy, Goss is the guy that has the hole putt to have a hole here. 
old adage in match play you always have to expect your opponent is going to hole out. You don't want it to be a shock to your system. Confident stroke just poured it right what in the stuff. Hole. Brady Watt must be wondering what he has to do to finally get by his good friend who's had the better of him in some recent key big tournaments. In the meantime, Matt Fitzpatrick, the first finalist through, trying to become another man from England to win the U.S. Amateur. Only other time it has been done. 1911, Harold Hilton. Fitzpatrick, family affair at the country club. Brady Watt is away at the par 4 17th. One down to Oliver Goss. And 117 left to the hole. And everything where this hole is cut on the right side of the green, Gary kind of wants to move the ball left. And slope right to left, and behind the hole, back to front. Take dead aim and hit a good shot. A little left and underneath the hole. Oh, too much spin. Catch that little false edge there in front. Took it all the way back off the green. This is the one time where being a little past the hole is not bad because you have that backstop that we saw Connors use with the little pitch shot. So something four or five yards past the hole is okay. Good opportunity here for Goss, Roger. It is 94 yards left. Can close it out with a win here. 17. Just fly it down a bit more, a little left to the hole. There you go. That's okay. Well, it's going to catch that little ridge. Still a good position to putt from, though. Short right one, up the tough hill. one to get close, though. Yep. Big advantage for Oliver Goss to perhaps close out his match here at 17. He's on the green. Brady Watt well short Roger. I'm sorry Dan forgive me I didn't hear that. Big advantage here for Oliver Goss with a one up lead at 17 he's on the green in regulation Brady Watt has come up short Roger. Uh, yes and uh, Brady Watt with the more difficult play of the two obviously this uh, up the hill will be moving left and the hole just kind of set back on a very small little area. Uh, where really it's level enough to cut a hole. Uh, so this uh, this is going to come to his left pretty good. And uh, Gott's putt uh, will be straighter and, and up the hill. So uh, uh, Watt not in a particularly good spot right now. Watt's been here in the States, we've mentioned, since the end of June. Began a job three years ago for a cleaning company that cleans mainly an office building in Australia, the Bank West Tower. I mean, there's nothing that Brady Watt doesn't uh, have a part of in cleaning that uh, tower, toilets. He does the night time work shift, 4.30 in the afternoon to 9.30 at night, which enables him to work on his golf game. Looking for a little magic here at 17. His first trip to the States, and there's Oliver Goss. His mother was born in Australia. Dad was born in England. Well, I would call it a little bit more than a little magic. <laughs> he needs a lot of magic right now, but. Well, it nearly pulled out a shot earlier. Yeah, there's a couple ways to get this close. He can put it up behind the hole and catch that uh, ridge and bring it back to it as well. But holding it, I think a little unlikely. Not a bad effort at all. A tenuous putt left for par for Watt. Meantime, Goss can end it with one stroke here. Really haven't seen this young man hit too many bad putts, Gary. I mean, pretty much every time he draws it back, it looks like it has a shot of going in. The young speed has been uh, very, very good. Uh, be it the uphill putts, be it the downhill putts, he seems to have figured it out pretty well. Never fun to stand and watch as uh, your opponent has an opportunity to put you away. Pretty helpless feeling. A 
just one of the housemates is moving on to the championship match. Still remember Watt has this par putt which has to go down. It's been such a well played match back and forth that uh, I certainly would hate to see it end on a negative note of a player missing a short putt. Uh, yeah, because uh, as you say, the play has been stellar, and uh, Brady Watt, although behind, is certainly not knuckled under at any point. He has been stellar and clutch, certainly throughout this backside. And really throughout this week, Roger, remember. Brady Watt was the co-medalist at this U.S. Amateur and Oliver Goss a high seed as well a three seed and this is just a year removed from a championship final Gary where we saw the 63rd seed and Stephen Fox win it all in the championship match against the 60th seed Michael Weaver so a little flip flop from the Cherry Hills scene from last year. That's a ticklish little putt here downhill moving a little to the right a little bit. Not a comfortable putt to hit, let's put it that way. Just to stay alive. There he does. Well Guts it out. Goss one up as they head over to the par 4 18th to decide the final finalist. Both Brady Watt and Oliver Goss have hit their tee shots at 18. Goss took driver, found the rough, so Brady Watt will be first to play from the fairway, Roger. 140 left of the hole, the hole cut in the front left portion of the green, and getting the ball close to the hole here coming down wind is no easy task, Gary. And especially if you just carry the bunker, you land on a down slope. Take the ball a little past the hole and see if it can utilize the slope in the green. He's trying to do that, but that may be too long. That is. That flies the green, Roger. That's a big mistake. From some very thick rough, this was the second that Goss played from 116. Really tough lie. Grab the club tightly and just swing with all your might. You can see the right leg and foot coming forward, but what a shot. Uses the slope from the right side of the green. Ball will continue to funnel right into the center of the putting surface and uh, heck of a shot. And just when you thought that Brady Watt had the look of a guy that could square it up here in the advantage, it is now a big time advantage for Goss. And Brady Watt certainly had good fortune yesterday. The little pitch out of the rough he played there against Scotty Scheffler. And this was an extremely fast moving ball down toward the hole. And the fact that he it was such a thick lie kind of paid off him in the end, Gary. Well, it did indeed. Uh, certainly wasn't going to put any spin on that ball whatsoever. We'll go on to make that putt to uh, beat Scotty Scheffler. There's his lie right now from behind the green. Doesn't appear to be as gnarly as yesterday's Roger, but kind of shot to the face. Well, he's pitching down a very steep slope uh, from the back of the screen. You got to get it on uh, just and, and kind of let it work its way toward the hole. It will move to his right as well. Uh, but you think he's got to hold. Or at least get it up and down and hope that Goss three putts. Well, I don't think we're going to see that because Goss's putt is not that difficult, and we just touched on the fact that his speed has been tremendous, especially on his approach putts. So, not likely. I agree with Raj. I mean, I think if you're Brady Watt at the moment right now, you have to be thinking one thing: I have to knock this in. going to rue the fact that the second shot was as poor as it was. In that position, middle of the fairway, 140 yards downwind, it shouldn't have been more than just a smooth pitching wedge. And obviously, either he was too pumped up or they just didn't figure the yardage quite right or they didn't factor in the amount of wind helping. But to fly the green from that position, uh, that's going to be the shot that really cost him. 
So Goss is just two putts away from putting this one away and you can't help but think back to the 14th when Watt hit that laser in there that he nearly hold had a kick in birdie conceded and Goss put it in on top to keep his one up lead and it's been one up for Goss ever since the 11th hole as these two have just gone back and forth with quality shot after another. Been a very impressive match to watch with the two good friends from Australia. Two putts to join Fitzpatrick in the final tomorrow. Once again. Very good speed. Ball was always going to move a little to the left. It started a little left, but uh, I'd like to think that uh, he certainly should be able to make that one. For the whole enchilada, not conceded. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> good friends, not that good of friends. That's right. At this particular stage. You have to watch it. I'm going to try to make mine and then watch you if I, if I make mine. All right, must make here for what? Seems like we've said that about three out of the last four holes, haven't we, Rog? Yeah, he's faced a bunch of these and has hold every one to this point. But uh, still, don't think it'll be enough. But uh, it would be at least a positive way to finish the match home on what uh, is a clutch putt. Guys that grew up playing junior golf together, so familiar with each other's games. Share the same dreams here in this U.S. Amateur. Only one guy gets to move on, though. Well, that's left. And Match that's over. It. Open with a win tomorrow, so you got the second ranked amateur of the world in Fitzpatrick going up against Oliver Goss, 13th ranked amateur in the world for the 113th U.S. Amateur title. Championship Sunday at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, and the 113th U.S. Amateur, where the 36 hole final between England's Matt Fitzpatrick and Australia's Oliver Goss began early this morning with the first 18, and it was back and forth the entire morning. Goss was one down before this second at the fifth. Quarter finalist from last year's championship with a birdie there to square it up. He also won the sixth with a birdie to take a one up lead. But back comes Fitzpatrick, who's trying to become England's first U.S. Amateur champion in more than a century. Long birdie put at the par three seventh to square it up. The two had just four of the first 15 holes. Here is Fitzpatrick second at the 15th. The low am at this year's British Open. Another birdie there, and a one-up lead. He took that lead to 18, and had this putt for par as both got into the rough here at the Country Club. And oh, back, rolled it in. Looked like he was gonna take a two-up lead to the second 18, because Goss had this to have the hole. And the unlikely chip in for par, as Fitzpatrick took a one-up lead to the second 18. He's now two up through 28 at the Country Club, where unbelievable history has already long been written. Golf Channel on NBC and the United States Golf Association are proud to present a national championship. Today, it's live coverage of the 113th United States Amateur. The year before the very first U.S. Amateur was played in 1895, the Country Club was one of five charter clubs which founded the United States Golf Association. 
and it's been intertwined with some of the best history in American golf ever since. And today, it will welcome its sixth U.S. Amateur winner at America's oldest golf championship. So will it be Matt Fitzpatrick who has the two-up lead over Oliver Goss? This 36-hole finale has reached the 11th. Both players have missed the green, and Roger Malpe is down there in this championship match. Roger? Well, Fitzpatrick got a heck of a break off the tee shot, hit a pretty big hook that hit in trees in the left and bounded back into the fairway. Second shot would not hold the green. This putt now from behind the hole downhill. Hole cut on a little shelf in the front left corner of this green, Gary, and it's going to move from right to left as it comes from the back of this green. All up by the collar here in the back, but it's not very high, so I don't see that as an issue. Pretty good break from right to left. It's carrying a lot of speed as it's going to slow down. Power. Very well done. So far in this uh, second 18, as Goss now, what kind of situation does he get from the bunker, Raj? No, he's got he got his tee shot into the fairway on the right hand side, but hit a poor short iron uh, from 165 yards. The lie now in the bunker is good, uh, but as I said, the hole sits on top of a little bit of a plateau here that he'll have to come across. He'll have to land it short of that uh, little ridge, just short of the hole, and get it to release up over. Hit into the face of it and killed it a little quicker than he would like. Both players from abroad, but both uh, attending universities here in the United States. Fitzpatrick uh, on his way to be a freshman at Northwestern and a sophomore is Goss at the University of Tennessee. As we welcome you, Steve Burkowski, our resident uh, college and amateur golf expert, along here with Gary Koch. And Gary, what about Oliver Goss? I know you spotted him early in this championship week as the guy to watch out for, and they are in a section of the golf course where it would seem to be that he could take advantage of some of his length over well, the young match. Well, he needs to if he's going to get back into this match, Dan, no question about it. They're coming to a part of the golf course that has the only par five and a series of very long par fours. Now, in watching the match earlier this morning as they were playing the morning 18, Goss was out driving Fitzpatrick by as much as 20 or more yards on virtually every hole. So he does have that advantage on these long holes coming up. But to take advantage of it, he's going to have to hit the ball in the fairway. And Steve Fitzpatrick, not very big. He's just 5'9", some 130 pounds, but he's played some big time golf here this week. He really has, Dan. Uh, can't overpower this golf course, but has had a game plan, won his four first uh, matches convincingly. And then when he trailed in the semis, he stuck to that game plan. It has moved on here to Sunday. So the par putt coming back right in the middle. He's got his younger brother, 14 year old Alex, on the bag. They have been an entertaining duo to watch all week long. And there is Alex feeling very confident about himself. He is enjoying <laughs> this as much as his older brother. Matt was saying that uh, it's not like Alex caddies for him on a regular basis. It's a very rare thing. So they are enjoying the moment. All right, for par to stay two down. Clutch putt by Goss. Take another look at this putt that rattled into the back of the hole, Dan. I mean, it's carrying a lot of speed. Boom. But when you hit the center <laughs> back of the cup, it's got a better chance of staying in there. As we set the 12th here, Gary, long par five. Well, as I club. mentioned, the only par five on the golf course, 628 yards played from a new tee. This hole actually played as a par four when we were here in 99 for the Ryder Cup. I think Goss, if he hits a drive down into this area, may actually have a chance to get the ball up close to the green in two. Most of the time, you're forced to try to lay this ball up into this very small area here on top of a very uh, high ridge to play a short third shot in. If by chance you miss the fairway off the tee, you're going to have to lay up well short down below that ridge and play a totally blind shot up to a very small green. So if it's Patrick with the honor here off this 628 yard oh. hole. Oh. Oh, right center of the fairway, solid tee shot. Fitzpatrick, the number two ranked amateur in the world at just 18 years old. And then you've got Oliver Goss, 13th in those same rankings. 
which become have become Steve even more important here in this uh, U.S. Amateur Championship as they now take the top 50 in those rankings here. Did begin a couple of years ago, Dan, and really a big part of the international flavor and success we have seen over the past couple of years, especially this week. This launch too much higher than this two down the right center. Good looking tee shot. Should needs a that. bounce. Needs a bounce. It got a little one, Raj, but it's going to find the rough. I don't think he's going to have a chance to get there in two. Again, yesterday in the semifinals, first time in the history of this championship, all four international players, and now one American in the championship match for the first time as well. Little overcast championship Sunday here at Brookline after just stellar weather all week long. Well, Dan, uh, Oliver Goss has mentioned that uh, Adam Scott is his golfing hero, so I did a little split screen here to take a look at both players. You'll notice the setup position is very similar. Both have very straight backs, a little bit of flex in the knee as they stand up to the ball. They look very athletic, very similar in build. Both take the club away by pushing it back, keeping it low, big full turn. Adam Scott's backswing perhaps just a little longer and a little more upright, but coming back to the ball, very similar position, great extension through. About the only difference I can see in the finish, well, the hips are turned a little bit more through by Oliver Goss, the left arm, perhaps just a little bit higher. I think that might have to do with one being 19 years old and the other <laughs> being 33, but uh, pretty similar swings, and uh, I have been very impressed with Goss's uh, golf game all week long. And here at the par 5 12th Roger it is Fitzpatrick who is away and will play first right. uphill Let's shot to this green right. has 326 right. to the hole 307 to the front mm -hmm. so uh, playing to that upper plateau as you say last uh, 90 yards of the hole or so uh, on that upper plateau yeah, totally blind shot here now he cannot see the landing area where he's trying to put this ball at all. Long and to hit that without being able to see that area, that's impressive. All sorts of problems can occur up there if you're off the mark. So now Goss, Raj. Yeah, pretty good line this right rough, uh, but a shame. 274 to the front looks like he's just laying up. Uh, if that ball had taken one good kick left, he's already driven it over through 330. And this going a little bit down the left. I think that's okay on that one. Yeah, gets a nice kick, Raj. A little bit uh, back to the right, so both players safely into that uh, layup area. Well, after he delivered that second shot, watch Matt look back at his younger brother, Alex, after delivering that blow. Yeah, pretty good, huh? <laughs> Well, Fitzpatrick, again, just 18 years old, one of the smallest in stature here this week at the amateur, but one who could find himself on one of golf's most prestigious trophies. Here's some of my conversation with Matt after making it to the championship match yesterday. Here's the Havemeyer Trophy. Have you had a chance to look at the names that are on here? This is the first time that I've managed to have a glance at it anyway, and uh, Tiger's name was straight there, which is quite strange. It was the first name that I looked at, really, and three in a row, it's, uh, it's not bad at all. You've already accomplished some pretty big things across the pond, including being the low amateur at this year's British Open at Muirfield. How do you think that experience helped you here at this US Amateur? It gave me a lot of confidence about my game, uh, along with sort of the massive crowds. It was uh, getting used to that, and to today the crowds have been amazing again. Can't believe how many people there are. What's it been like having your younger brother, Alex, just 14 years old out here? He seems to be kind of a character, a guy that's not afraid to kind of show himself and his personality. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's definitely a character. You know, he reminds us a little bit of Eddie Lowry, the history here at the Country Club. Of course, the 10-year-old caddy of Francis we met. Um, maybe you guys can pull off your own kind of history here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, a few people have uh, said that. So, yeah, it'd be fantastic to to uh, to win tomorrow. Does the name Harold Hilton mean anything to you? Yeah, I've, I've heard a, a bit about him that he's the uh, last English winner of this, so yeah, it'd be nice to uh, follow in his footsteps, I guess, but we'll, we'll just have to see. 
and another man from England who's also had a pretty good summer this year and winning a major championship, the U.S. Open, Justin Rose, winning at Marion. It has been a long time since Tony Jacklin had won that USGA championship, the U.S. Open previous in 1970. So do you have good English vibe over here in the United States for this summer? Uh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Uh, I've, it's nice. I've had a lot of support this week as well, a lot from the American people, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's hopefully it'll carry on being a good summer for the English. So. And after his summer concludes, he'll be, uh, of course, going to Northwestern, where there's been a lot of comparisons already to Luke Donald, who played his collegiate golf there, also from England, like Matt Fitzpatrick. Now his third, Roger, at the 12th. And that's from 82 yards, holds at 19 paces into the green, just over a ridge. Nicely played. That's a good lead. Ever so slightly back up the hill, so well played. Goss now 81. Much time to uh, get a good shot here. He's uh, been in position a couple of times here in the last few holes to make something happen. He just hadn't been able to pull it off. Oh, this is chunked. That was kind of a decelerating yeah, swing there. It certainly was. Looked like the backswing got a little too long and just no acceleration through. So it's Goss who will play again here at the 12th. Uh, just short of the greens here at the country club, so have to be very precise with the contact here. Again, a very lofted club, pitching the ball well onto the green, Gary, which he's done a number of times. But Fitzpatrick will have a putt to grab a commanding three up lead. You see Oliver there for Golf Australia, one of the four protocol kids targeted three years ago by Brad James, the high performance director. And he saw some things in Oliver in the beginning, some red flags, as he called them. Gary he was small, skinny, signs of scoliosis that led to some technical issues, but they figured that out technically and physically. Golf Australia gets the players ready, but he was highly encouraged to come to the U.S. for uh, School at the University of Tennessee, work on things like short game, course management, emotional growth, uh, even being out here uh, on the golf course and TV. And Brady Watt, obviously, also part of Golf Australia. Good friend, Brady Watt of Goss, longtime friend. They played junior golf together, and of course, Goss beat him in the semifinals yesterday. And Watt is on the bag after Goss's regular caddy. Oh, and so oh. Fitzpatrick with a little bit left coming. But he's got the five. And now to have it. And Roger, this has been a consistent theme here these last few holes, it seems, for Oliver Goss. He's always putting to try to have the hole. When you're two down, that's not a good thing. No, and it wears on your nerves yeah. to keep having to face those hole after hole. It will wear you out. Steve, he says he's been a part of that golf Australia program for some three years now and says it absolutely changed his game to a whole nother level. Been a part of it since he was 16 years old. And the start of the by that third shot able to save the par. And he and his good friend, Brady Watt, move on to the next hole, two down. Not often you beat one of your best friends the day before, and then he ends up on your bag in the championship match. Goss was born in England, but has been in Australia for a long time, most of his life. Most times hosting a U.S. Amateur Championship. This is the sixth time that the country club has hosted it. Tied with Marion, which just hosted another U.S. Open this summer. As they head to the 13th, the 432-yard par four, Gary. And uh, I would imagine both players, Dan, will hit less than driver off the tee. The fairway kind of ends at about 280 yards. It goes down a very steep hill that runs to the right, right toward the water here on the right-hand side. So you need to stay short of that. Second shot is played, uh, you know, ever so slightly back uphill. Another green that has a very severe tilt from uh, back to front. Also a little bit from left to right hole location today is uh, 
over on the front left portion. So being in the fairway to play to this green is really critical. Look at the fairways in the oh. afternoon session for yeah. Fitzpatrick. Well, that was what he was, he was asked earlier in the week. He goes, why are you being successful this week? And you know, we thought maybe it was a short game or maybe it was some iron play. But he said, hey, I am driving the ball in the fairway. And obviously he has done it uh, throughout this championship match. And that puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. You see this tee shot now down to the fairway, some 32 feet, so somewhat blind to the landing area. That two, a good one going up the right center. Just beyond Fitzpatrick as Gosh shows his length there. Two up through 30 holes in the championship match. Fitzpatrick is at the U.S. Amateur. Right into the TV. I think. Fitzpatrick first to play here at the 13th, Roger. And 190 left to the hole, hole cut in the front left hand portion of the green. Uh, it's over a little rise that, that we saw a couple of balls putted from behind the hole, or we saw one putted off the green yesterday. That's good. It's not as big a slope for this hole is, but still underneath the hole would be good. Twirling the club like he loves it. It's just past it. Good shot. Well, he's doing just what he needs to do. I mean, he's keeping the ball in play off the tee, which then allows him to play you know, relatively conservative shots into the greens, which is when you're two up, that's all you need to do is just keep putting the pressure on your opponent. And he's doing a great job of that. You see here that Oliver Goss, who needs to make something happen, has now missed four consecutive greens. And, and the last uh, few were with short irons. So, uh, Roger, he's just That's not able to hit the shot when he needs to. You're right, and I think the key point is every time Goss gets up to play, now that Fitzpatrick has the honor, uh, he looks at a ball in the fairway before he tees off, and he looks at a ball on the green before he tees off. It's, uh, it wears on you. That's now from 160. Good opportunity here. From this yardage, uh, short iron in hand, a good shot. You should be able to put the ball a little right, a little short of the hole yourself a good look at a birdie. And hit very high and on a line just right of the hole. Now there you go. That's right where you'd like to be, cutting uphill. Well, after Oliver's semifinal win yesterday, I had a chance to sit down with the 19-year-old from Perth, Australia, to talk about his incredible week here at the Country Club. You had a chance to check out this Havemeyer Trophy, uh, Oliver, and have you had a chance to dream for just a moment that your name could be on that, that trophy with all those legends? I have. This is the first time I've seen it. I have thought about it. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. For so many years, all sorts of young Australian golfers have looked up to Greg Norman. Your generation, it's been more about Adam Scott. You specifically had a chance to play with Adam last year. I know I got to I got to play with Adam last year at the Australian Masters. Are probably the best couple of days I've spent on the golf course. I definitely look up to Adam, um, not just on the golf course, but his whole lifestyle. It was an amazing semi-final match with you and your good friend and housemate this week here. Yeah. When did you decide to have him serve as your caddy in the championship match? Um, well, I found out today that my caddy has been on the bag all week. He's flying out tomorrow back to Australia. I just immediately there was no question that I wanted Brady to caddy for me tomorrow. You've developed a quick uh, affection for Fenway Park and the Boston Red Sox. You went there the night before the semifinal, and you got a great honor, a chance to go back to Fenway Park and throw out the first pitch. You going to get it to the plate? I hope so. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to be a little bit nervous. But um, I didn't think I'd be doing that in my lifetime. But um, yeah, I'm really happy. It's the first time in the history of this championship that. Not a single American is in the finals. Uh, you guys have made your mark here this week. Did you know what the U.S. Amateur Championship was several years ago? And do you know what the significance of perhaps winning this title is? To me, this is the biggest amateur tournament in the world. And um, I'm just too excited to be part of the final. And um, I'm really proud to be here. 
a chance to put your name all along with your fellow Aussie mate Nick Flanagan uh, back in 2003. Exactly right. Um, he's, he tweeted at me a couple of times this week saying it's nice to be another Aussie on the trophy because he's feeling a bit lonely. So. <laughs> Gary Cowan also a two-time U.S. Amateur Champion as well. And then Goss with the baseball situation that he had at Fenway Park. There were the two guys that threw out the first pitches last night. Fitzpatrick and Goss side by side at Fenway Park. Goss going there for the second straight night and Matt over there on the right who by the way didn't even change out of his golf gear. <laughs> yeah, he still had his shoes on. You know you need some traction when you're going to throw that pitch and rear back and fire it. <laughs> Right now it is Fitzpatrick with a two up lead as they play this 13th. Big swinger from right to left for Fitzpatrick. And as it's swinging left is going down the hill. I don't believe lightning fast. But he needs to be careful. Okay, go, go. Yeah. Swing so right, no gimme. By the way, I want to make it clear Cowan was from Canada, not from Australia. But a two time amateur champion in his own right. Yeah, back in 66 and in 71, Gary Cowan won. Back when the U.S. Amateur, there was a stretch in there from 65 to 72 when it was conducted at stroke play. And both of uh, Cowan's victories came under that format. And Corey Connors of Canada making it deep into this championship, also from Canada as well. So international internationals are really represented at the country club this week. All right, uphill putt. You can be firm with it. Can't be leaving it short. When you're two down. Mentioned the youthful looking Matt Fitzpatrick. Not only at the British Open this year was he checked repeatedly for his player badge. Son, are you, you playing in the championship? <laughs> they wanted to know if he was a caddy or a, a ball boy. <laughs> also, this week at the U.S. Amateur, he had to constantly ID himself. Yes, I'm in the field, and here he is. The chance to put his name on the trophy. Great pace of play by both these young men. They do not double at all. Two up through 31 for Fitzpatrick. Championship match at the 510 yard par four. 14th. And longest par four on the golf course in this championship match, Dan, and it is imperative that you hit the fairway. If you don't hit the fairway, the chances of getting the ball on the green are almost none as the green sits up uh, some 30-plus uh, feet More. Uh, above yeah, the level of the fairway, very steep entryway in front. Fourteenth fairway at the top of the first hill. Can we have those people move back Take a look at the hole while we have a chance, Gary? Yeah, this was another hole that was played as a par five when we were here in '99 for the Ryder Cup, and now just a really stout par four. Slight dog leg to the left. Ideally, you'd like to drive it down the right side, get a kick as the fairway cants in that direction from right to left. And then the second shot, as I mentioned, is played way uphill, some 30 plus feet to a very small target. And it starts down the left hand side. Yeah, that's going to find another fairway, Raj. Extreme left hand edge down on the flat, so in good position. Just keeps putting the pressure on Goss, even though Goss outdrives him. This two launched a little further left down that left hand side. And here is Fitzpatrick, just 18 years old himself, an amateur, on the cusp of trying to put his name on the Havemeyer Trophy, a trophy which has Francis Wimet's name on it twice. In fact, Wimet really coveted those two U.S. Amateur Championships just as much or more than he did that 1913 U.S. Open. Talk about a shot delivered yesterday in that spectacular semifinal duel between Goss and his good friend Brady Watt. This was the second at this 14th that nearly Watt pulled out, settled for a conceded birdie, 
And then it's good pal Goss for birdie to have the hole. Well, this is a very improbable putt to make. In fact, he said if I hit it 100 times, I'd probably only make it once. But he did it when it counted. And he kept his one up lead and ended up closing out Watt. Now is caddy today at the 18th hole. So here they are in comeback mode today. All eight. Fitzpatrick is away, Roger. Thank you. And 198 to carry on top of the hill onto the green, 217 to the hole. As I mentioned, it is uphill some 30 feet up to that green, and if you come up short, the ball will come right back down that steep slope, a good 30 or 40 yards short of the green. And the temperature's a little warmer today than they have been throughout this week, and uh, we've had some breeze in the afternoons, but very still today. Air moving at all. Flats the ball rather low, so not an easy shot. Here. That sounded a low mess hit, peeling a little bit right. I don't know if this is going to get up. It does. It does, but it skips through the green and into the uh, primary cut of rough. And from there, though, at least he will be playing uphill, so not a terrible leave unless the lie is awful. How about uh, Goss's lie, Roger? Yeah, Goss's lie is not awful. Uh, again, with a big distance advantage off the tee. But uh, you wonder how easily this ball can be controlled from the rough. If he can get enough club on it to get it up on top. And he wants it to get up. It's on a very good line if it does. Shot there is it's very delicate going straight down the hill to the hole. As we get back out to the championship match with Fitzpatrick two up through 31 in this 36 hole championship match. Roger. I thought this ball came up a little short of here and I thought it'd be pitching more uphill. Now this is a, not the best of lies and really kind of playing slightly downhill and from right to left. You know what? It takes a little courage to make that biggest swing from 20 feet, 23 or 4 feet from the hole. Well, Roger, the thing that's really impressed me this week, you think about it, this young man comes from over in England. He doesn't play out of long rough like this around the greens. I mean, you've played golf over there. I've played golf over there. Most of the time, the areas around greens in, in England and Scotland uh, very tightly mown. So he has learned and developed very quickly a very effective way of playing these short shots around the green out of the long grass. This one looks pretty delicate, too. Yeah, up against the taller collar behind him, and he caught that on the way down. The ball just kind of squirted. That was a very tough lie for the shot to be played. So Goss with a much longer par putt than Fitzpatrick and two down at a precarious time in the match. You can clearly see here he gets well behind the ball catches a little bit of grass before he gets to the ball and that took any spin whatsoever off of it. Goss really Steve one of the more celebrated recruits that Tennessee has ever had. He had an All-American season as a freshman. He did. He only started in the spring. Dan, eight events, seven top 25s, a third team All-America selection. Head coach Jim Kelson said he came to Knoxville and helped UT out at a time where that program really needed it. And speaking to assistant head coach uh, Casey Van Dam, he said the recruiting was tough. Oliver wasn't a big fan of responding by email, so they never quite knew where they stood till he finally said, I'm heading your way to Tennessee. Again, his father born in England where Oliver was born but again at a very young age moving to Australia where his mother was born. So a citizen. Of Australia. I'm trying to follow up in the footsteps of Nick Flanagan who went back in 2003 but he's going to need to come back. It's distracted by a little noise out inside the green. Roger a tough time to be distracted this. Uh Pretty critical putt, I would think, for Mr. Goss. Yeah, I sure wouldn't think it would break much from here. Pretty much up the fall, but uh, uphill putt to be aggressive with. Pretty much, obviously, for a couple of reasons. And so, Matt 
Fitzpatrick with a chance to take a three up lead with four holes to play. That is the kind of score with those few holes left that it is really hard to overcome. Had the chance to speak with Mike Walker, Matt's teacher over in England for the past four years. He says he has immense satisfaction in his success. He first came to him struggling the day before a tournament needed an emergency lesson, was steady through the first two years. And he said the last two, he's gone absolutely ballistic. He said he's good at everything, maybe not exceptional. Said he's very monotonous, uh, sort of uh, equated him to someone like Nick Faldo, Luke Donald. Just they go about their business, and at the end of the day, it's usually good enough. It's a good way to play tough golf courses like the Country Club. Yeah. Yeah. Fitzpatrick and young Alex moving closer as they go to the par 4 415 481 yards today. Yeah, this is another one of the new tees, Dan, that uh, has lengthened this hole by some 50 yards since we were here in 1999. It creates now a blind tee shot as you play over the former tee that was used and try to put the ball in the fairway short of that road that uh, enters into the clubhouse. Uh, one of the uh, larger greens on the golf course, in fact, the largest at uh, over 5,400 square feet. You see the whole location there today, kind of right in the front left portion. So, chance to land the ball right at the front of the green and, and actually get a shot close, as uh, uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick did in uh, the morning session. <laughs> and to add one more thing, Mike told me that Matt and uh, he work about once a month, depending on his schedule, and he actually has a lesson booked for next Saturday. My question <laughs> is, what are they going to work on? Yeah, that's uh, very true. So this is the reason why it's a blind tee shot downhill some 32 feet and you can see the tee that was used in the Ryder Cup right in front. It's not just his younger brother who are here again Matt's parents Russell and Sue have been here throughout the duration. And I guess his father was so nervous that uh, he stayed in the clubhouse, couldn't bear to come out here and actually watch his son. His mother came out yesterday when he closed out the semifinal match at 17. <laughs> we'll see if dad is able to muster up the courage to come out today. He's turning a little more to the left. And that's going to find the rough. And with the hole cut on the front left, not a good angle. Matt Fitzpatrick is in good position. Championship Sunday at the U.S. Amateur, three up through 32. Winning the amateur put the, opened the door for me. It made it all possible, and it was, as far as I'm concerned, the uh, most important single golf tournament that I ever won. It, it, uh, it pumped me up personally. It gave me confidence that I needed to get on with my life. So many of the greats put their name on the Havemeyer Trophy. Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas twice, Tiger Woods three years in a row, great Bobby Jones, five time U.S. Amateur Champion. Fitzpatrick looking like he might be England's second U.S. Amateur Champion in history. With a three up lead here, Harold Hilton again, the only other Englishman to win the U.S. Amateur back in 1911. And there he is. Again, with this influx of international players that uh, seemingly are coming over more and more with the change in the rankings, we may see even more international players on that Havemeyer Trophy in the future. That's Patrick now 180 to the hole, hole cut in the very front of the green. Open in front, no bunkers or Draw. anything to carry. But Draw. Draw. Boy, Matt. It's a little right of the hole. Go. Not a bad leave. Yeah, it's fine. Not a problem whatsoever. Should make a par without any problem from there. Not such a good angle from this left rough for Goss, Rog. Not as good. 163 uh, lie is okay. The grass not as dense here as it would be if it had been a few yards uh, to his right. Oh, this is pulled though. 
Going at the bunker left, lands over that. Yeah, most pulls go long. The club face is shut down. The ball comes out a little lower. Goes farther than you expect. And he's going to be in some nasty grass with a delicate little pitch down the hill back to the hole. Crunch time for Goss. If he loses this hole, Fitzpatrick will close it out. And perhaps it could be another four and three margin as we take a look at Matt's trip to the championship match beginning with a round of 64 on Wednesday four and three another four and three win on Thursday two four and three wins on Thursday another one of the quarterfinals on Friday before he ousted Corey Connors of Canada two and one of the semifinals of the birdie at the 17th in those first four matches he only trailed for two holes combined but what might be just as impressive as his golf ability is his academics a little bit of a slow start golf wise this summer that's because he had the A levels which is basically two years of study one test ultimately decides where you're going to college over in Europe if you're going to Northwestern you certainly understand what academics all about and his dad Russell is a massive realist and said this whole time education is critical a degree is imperative of golf is nothing to sort of just hang your hat on and he sort of wavered from that recently saying well if you want to give golf maybe just one year your full attention I'll give you permission and Matt said no school will happen right now so certainly a good balance between the two. Well we can't help but think about Wemet and his young 10 year old caddy Eddie Larry back in 1913 just kind of a guy with a personality that kind of <laughs> prodded his man along and Young Alex brought his older brother along here at the Country Club a hundred years later. It hasn't been exactly all smooth sailing for uh, Alex and Matt. In fact, Matt forgot his 58 degree wedge at the first hole earlier in this championship. Uh, yeah, and he <laughs> needed it on the second green. He had missed the green, wanted to use the 58 degree wedge, looked at uh, brother Alex and said, well, where is it? Uh, Oh, by the way, it's laying back by the bunker back on the first green. Fortunately, they got it back pretty quickly. And by the time uh, he uh, got to the eighth hole, he used it to hole out a very delicate little pitch from behind the green. Yeah, Matt, who's usually pretty calm, says he did get a little hot. He got a little hot at his brother. And he said, well, you know, by one hole later, we were good. Everything was fine. Now, Goss here, important shot from the thick rough, Raj. Yeah, and this is a particularly thick patch around this bunker. And as we've talked about, Gary, uh, the grass around these bunkers is probably the longest rough out here. So this is not an easy one here. It's down in deep. Again, it's going to be a putt for a par. And at this stage of the proceedings, he just has not hit enough good short iron approach shots. Uh, he's had the opportunities and just has not been able to come through with them. Matt's father, Russell, had been dreaming about going to the Masters. In fact, Fitzpatrick clinching a spot when he won the semifinal match yesterday. His dad, the last four years, has tried to get Masters tickets in that random balloting. It has come up short. Well, now his son has earned him a spot to Augusta already. A lot of speed here. That's uh, something we haven't seen much of. Uh, speed on the greens, around the greens with the putters. Been very good all week. I'm not sure if Mr. Fitzpatrick is out on the course, but there is his mother, Sue, who's one of the first to congratulate him after the birdie dropped to 17 in the semifinal victory yesterday. Whole family here. Matt, Alex, Sue, and Russell. Hoping that the young 18 year old can put it away here. And they're leaving Tuesday night and had a four day trip planned in New York City. And each day he continued to survive in this uh, championship. The little trip to the Big Apple getting just a bit shorter. Well, nothing short about this par putt, Raj. Well, this is a good uh, eight feet downhill doesn't do much but you have to hit this one pretty softly so that's going to put big time pressure on Goss here has to make it 
to move it on. Well, again, there's not much slope here, but uh, when you're facing elimination, none of them are easy, Gary. No, they certainly aren't, Raj. And this is an area of his game he's been working on quite hard of late. Changed his setup position slightly. Uh -oh. Oh. And just like that, Matt Fitzpatrick has his name on the Hammer Trophy. In the 113 U.S. Amateur Championship. And wouldn't you know, it's another four and three win. Ahead. We've got all sorts of good stuff from the morning 18 as they really went back and forth in the first 18, which began early this morning here at the Country Club. Fitzpatrick and Goss. So, also an announcement on the Walker Cup team. The five players who joined the other five who've already been named, but it's Fitzpatrick with a four and three victory over Oliver Goss at the U.S. Amateur. We've been saying all week long that it takes some uh, magic to keep it together for six matches beginning on Wednesday to win this title. And Oliver Goss just didn't have his best stuff today, especially in the afternoon. Well, he really didn't, Dan, and he didn't do what we talked about at the top of the show. He had the advantage lengthwise on some of those uh, holes on the back nine there when we first came on the air, and he was unable to hit the ball in the fairway. And because he was unable to hit the ball in the fairway, he wasn't able to take advantage of that length. He had shorter shots into the greens, but he just didn't uh, play any good ones and did and give himself many chances. Steve, I imagine the confidence he'll take back to Knoxville will be pretty huge when he joins uh, his mates there. Oh, without a doubt, what a year it has been for Tennessee golf. Garrick Porteous won the British Amateur, a former UT golfer. So a couple of those uh, former volunteers and a current volunteer heading to Augusta. A lot of confidence moving forward for Oliver. And Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, Gary, pretty impressive. Yeah, it just, just did what he needed to do, Dan. He kept hitting the ball in the fairway off the tee. He said earlier in the week, that's the reason why I've gone on this far in this championship. I keep putting the ball in play and to do it under the pressure of the championship match and he did it over and over again. Well, we're ready for the presentation of the championship trophy to the Good winner afternoon. here in 2013. Uh, my name is Glenn Nager. I'm the president of the United States Golf Association. I hope you've enjoyed the 113th U.S. Amateur Championship. In particular, I hope you've enjoyed watching these two fabulous young men play spectacular golf for the biggest prize in amateur golf on this historic and hallowed ground at the Country Club. First played in 1895, the U.S. Amateur is the premier amateur championship in all of golf in this world. This year's championship featured a world-class field of 312 players, individuals who displayed not only great skill, but also the game's inherent values of sportsmanship and good character. Today, Matt Fitzpatrick will be forever linked to the greats of the game who've left the country club as champions. These players include Jess Sweetser, the 1922 U.S. Amateur Champion, Julius Boros, the 1963 United States Open Champion, Curtis Strange, the 1988 U.S. Open champion, and of course, who can forget, Francis We Met, the champion of the 1913 United States Open as an amateur. Without further delay, please join me in welcoming the 2013 United States Amateur Champion, Matt Fitzpatrick. Matt 
for your victory this week, I'm honored to present you with two distinguished awards. First is the champion's gold medal. And second, I'm pleased to present you with the Havermeyer Trophy, the time-honored emblem of this nation's national championship for amateurs. Well, Matthew, obviously, congratulations on your victory. Does it seem at all ironic to you that a hundred years ago, an American beat people from England to win the Open Championship, and now, over a hundred years later, you're the first Britisher to win the U.S. Amateur? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I can't really describe how I'm feeling at the minute. Um, I, I also think it's quite strange that I had my little brother on the bag um, and every single, well, most people have been saying that we're a bit like we may. Uh, so, no, it's, uh, it's a fantastic feeling and uh, it's nice to be the first for, for a while. Now, your little brother was on the bag for you as caddy, as a little guy, Eddie Lowry, was on the bag for Francis we met. Did he keep you calm? Because he looked a little more nervous than you. Am I right or wrong? Uh, it's hard to tell. I, 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 walking down the 15, I was pretty focused, so uh, he, was, he was, to be fair, laughing and joking away. But, uh, yeah, I, I think maybe he was a bit nervous, and that's why he was trying to be funny. But... Uh, no, he was, he's, he's done an amazing job, and I, I don't know how I'm going to thank him, really, so, yeah. Now, you came here as the number two ranked amateur in the world, and obviously now you're in some of the greatest championships in golf. What are your thoughts about what's next for Matthew Fitzpatrick? Uh, what's next for me is to go home and chill out for a few days. <laughs> um, my, my legs are tight, my legs are definitely tired, that's for sure. Uh, and I've, unfortunately, I've got to prepare myself for for college because I'm quite a bit behind in the process. <laughs> so I've uh, got to get my visa still, and I uh, need to get on top of that before uh, I can think about anything else, really. Well, yeah, you got to come back for next year's U.S. Open, the Masters, and of course you're going to be in the Open Championship at home. Uh, uh, this is pretty heady stuff. What uh, when you left the shores across the way, did you ever think this might happen this week? It's it's always hard to tell. Uh, I've been playing pretty well since the uh, since the end of my exams, which was just before just before the Open, and I came into it with positives, and I've been playing playing nicely and practicing quite hard and stuff like that. So I had in mind that I might be able to do well, but if some I, I didn't think about getting this far really. Um, I wouldn't say I was questioning my ability. I just Never even thought this far forward into the into the tournament. Really, I was ha happy to qualify and then just take it from there. So. Well, congratulations on a great week of golf, Matthew Fitzpatrick, the 2013 U.S. Amateur Champion. So Sheffield England has a U.S. Amateur Champion, and so does Northwestern, which is going to be. One of the next stops for young Matthew, freshman at Northwestern, he and his brother celebrate the 113th championship.